Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Co market update. This week, UBS has announced a record quarterly profit of $29 billion, and this comes after its arranged takeover of troubled Credit Suisse back in March. March was a difficult time for the banking sector. Silicon Valley Bank over in the US had collapsed and there was some concern that the contagion would spread across the global banking sector. Investors and depositors started pulling money out of perceived riskier banks and Credit Suisse was one of the worst affected. The shares dropped heavily and the authorities were forced to take action and they arranged a takeover by UBS. Thankfully, their swift action was quite reassuring to markets and we have seen a stabilisation in European banking stocks since then. On this chart, we've got the Eurostox Banks Index shown by the pink line, and that's over the last two years. You can see that big drop in March, but then the subsequent recovery. The green line is UBS, and that recent jump in the share price suggests it got a good deal when it bought Credit Suisse. The situation in the US remains a bit more divided. The US has regional banks such as Silicon Valley Bank, which is subject to a lesser degree of regulation than the big global banks. You can see the regional banks index has not recovered since its big drop in March, and it's still down over 40% on a two year basis. However, investors do appear much more confident in the strictly regulated global banks such as JP Morgan shown by the green line. This week we've had the publication of the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index or PCE over in the US. While here in the UK we tend to look at CPI or the Consumer Price Index as our preferred measure of inflation, over in the US they tend to look at two different measures, CPI and PCE, and PCE is actually the preferred measure of the Federal Reserve and that's the one they tend to look at more closely when they're deciding on future interest rate policy. While CPI tends to measure what households are buying, PCE measures what businesses are selling, and it's thought to be slightly better at capturing changes in consumer behaviour. For example, consumers might switch to a cheaper product if inflation is high. The reading for July for core CPE was 4.2%, which was slightly up from June's reading of 4.1%, but this minor increase was very much expected, and the longer term trend for core PCE very much appears to be a downward one if we look at this graph here from March onwards, so this should be good news for future interest rate policy. And finally this week we've had the latest FTSE 100 quarterly reshuffle, and this is always a good indicator of the types of companies doing well and the types of companies not doing so well. This week we've had four companies being promoted into the index, shown by the green, and four companies being relegated from the index, shown by the pink. Let's look at those relegations first. We've got Persimmon, which is a major house builder, and that's been struggling due to higher interest rates. We've got Aberdeen, which is an asset manager, and they've been suffering from outflows in the last couple of years because the market has been so volatile. Insurer Hiscox experienced the share price fall due to its earnings missing expectations. And finally, Johnson Matthews shares have dropped a lot after it gave up on its plans to make batteries for electric vehicles. And then looking at the promotions in the green, the first three of those are actually all in the healthcare space, and healthcare tends to be a more resilient sector when markets are volatile. Decra is involved in veterinary medicine, Hikma is involved in generic pharmaceuticals, and then Diploma makes medical equipment. And then finally on that list we've got M&S, back in the FTSE four years after dropping out. And the company has spent the last couple of years lowering prices and increasing the range of its food offering. Moving on to have a look at next week, it's looking very quiet on the calendar. We're not expecting results out from any companies on the Killick cover list, but we are coming to the end of the summer holidays now, so we do expect things to get a bit busier as we move into autumn. That's it from us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.